Okay, Chavra. So we're going to learn a Torah in the Kutamaran that will prepare us a little bit for the Meichen of Tisha B'Av Haba Aleinu Tova and Korilai Moed, that we will call the Mirz Hashem Tisha B'Av Moed when it's Nesapich to be a place of Gula, when it's Nesapich to be a place of Yantif. And we're going to see in Rabbi Nachman's Torah, in Reish Mem Zayin, one of the ways to sweeten the experience of Tisha B'Av. One of the ways to sweeten and undo the concealment of Tisha B'av and find the innermost point of Tisha B'av, which is the secret light of Binyan Beis HaMikdash. Now, like we were talking about before, this Torah, which is really a remez, is Os Reish Mem Zayin, which also spells out remez. And so there's going to be something about this Torah, which is a remez, and the nature of this Torah being a remez is not secondary to the idea, but it's fundamentally connected to the idea. And the idea might be as follows, that we know that there's a klal of dai l'chakima biramiza, that it's enough for the wise one to receive a hint. Dai l'chakima biramiza. And the notion of dai l'chakima biramiza, it's enough for a wise person to get a hint, is assumed to mean that the wise person can use their wisdom, and that he can extrapolate from the hint that they've received, and then he can intuit or through deductive reasoning come to understand the whole thing. So all the wise person needs is a hint and in truth, once a person has that hint, then they'll be able to really kind of receive the rest of the information. But there's another way of looking at the idea of Dai L'chakim Ebiramiza. Doesn't just mean you have a hint and now you have enough to build up the whole picture. It's the secret that the hint is literally enough. That once a wise person has discerned the hint, the remez, so then Mamela, they have everything at once. They have all things in one. There's no need for it to be done in a different way. There's no need to open it up. The remez is enough. It's like the halacha of tam ke'ikr. A taste of something is as if it represents the thing itself. Because all a person needs is a taste in order to realize what the future dish is going to be like. It's what the Lubavitch Ravi meant when he said that the main mitzvah of our generation is te'imas Shabbos or to'ameha, which we understand why it gets so meshugana, right? Why this mitzvah, why is Toa Meha in our generation become such a ridiculous thing? Because as Labavitch Rebbe said, this is the Ikram mitzvah of our generation to taste Shabbos, Arab Shabbos, to draw redemption prior to redemption. And that's the secret of a remez. As Rav Kuk, Slusia Ganelinu said, remez is re'e maze. That a wise person, when they see a hint, it's not just something that hints to the fact that there's more, but hidden within this idea is the Iker Nakuda itself. And so all of that is to say that in here rests a hidden way of redeeming Tisha B'Av in our own lives. Zak the Heilig Rebbe. Isa B'Zohar HaKadosh. It's written in the Zohar HaKadosh, in the Raya Mehemna, in Parsha Tzav, so in the third volume of the three-volume set of the Zohar, on Daf Chaf Zayin Amad Beis, that Teku HaNe'amar B'Shas Hu B'chinas Mechusar Tikun. So this really comes really well following Torah Samach Dalid, which really taught us all about the reality of unanswerable questions. We saw how all unanswerable questions, all of the concealment in the world, comes from the fact that there's a halal panui and that there's certain things that can never be fully answered. And the only way to find hope there is to uncover the secret song of faith, which does not seek out an answer, but rather is willing to live with the paradox of Simsim and the Halal, and how Hashem is there and not there at the very same time. And that's the secret of the Levush, Kahadin Kamsa, the Levush Mine Yubei, like we saw in Torah Samach Talad. So over here, we're seeing, Rabbeinu is saying, that as a result of the Simsim, basically, you're going to find unanswerable questions, and those unanswerable questions express themselves in the concept of Teku. Shas, which is ultimately the way of clarifying the proper interpretation of Torah Shebech was something that Chazal were able to begin to do specifically because Torah Shebech was no longer accessible to us. The true meaning was no longer accessible. We needed to write down what Chazal understood the true meaning to be. And that's the beginning of the written word of Torah Shebech of Eis La'asos La'ashem Hifru Sarasecha. It's not meant to be written down. You're not supposed to write it down. But because the threat of forgetfulness ascended upon the world, so there was a responsibility of Chazal to put the information down. But within the information, within Shas, within the Gemara, which is commenting on the Mishnah, what we find is that Chazal didn't just give us the clarified answers. 
They didn't just give us the clarified points of information needed for living life in the right way, which would be like a Sefer Halacha or a Psak Halacha. Rather, it provides with us the cacophony of voices and all of the various machloksim and shas, which are seemingly a machlokas of kamsa, bar kamsa, this person said that, I say this, he says that, anger, frustration, wanting to be right, etc., etc. And all of these machloksim and shas, they remain in the Gemara. And not only that, but it's not only the questions that have answers that make their way into the Gemara, but it's questions that don't have clear answers. And sometimes the answers get attacked and those answers are put into question. And so it forces a person to reorient themselves towards what the Metzias of Torah Shabbal Peh is. It's clearly not something that's meant to add clarity because there would have been a lot more ways to write a clarified book. But clearly it's meant to bring a person in contact with a certain consciousness of what it means to live a Daf Gemara, which is to encounter unanswerable questions. To Yuftas and Abayes and, and, and Ibai Seimas and Chasuri Mechser of Ahachik Tani, all of the different broken things about the way that Chazal set up the Gemara, the Ruach Kadsham. And one of the elements that most surprisingly find them, their place in the Daf is Teku. Teku is an unanswerable question. Teku is a suffix that either cannot be clarified by definition or as a result of a certain circumstance, it cannot be clarified until the coming of Mashiach Sakenu. And that Elio Anavi, Tishbi Yavo, Vietaritz Kushos Rabayos. And Teku stands for the fact that Elio Anavi is going to come along and answer the unanswerable questions. But first and foremost, we find the reality of a Teku. There's something in this world called Teku. It's a question, it's a conundrum, it's an issue, it's a difficulty, it's a struggle, it's a mania, it's, it's a, 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 a mind lock that cannot be gotten over. I cannot find an answer to this. And what is the condition of a teku, says Rabbi Nachman, based on the Zohar? A teku, every teku in Shas, is representative of the fact that it's mechusar tikun. Something is broken. Something is not yet fixed properly. If things were fixed properly, then there wouldn't be these unanswerable questions. And clearly the result of an unanswerable question is rooted in the fact that there's something that is not complete. We have not yet gotten to the point where the clarification of this unanswerable question has emerged. Amuna hasn't rested there yet. And therefore, every teku, every unanswerable question, brings us face to face with the reality that, wow, there's something missing from creation. There's something missing from my life. There's something missing from my orientation, from my functioning in this world that creates this place of unanswerable questions. So the Zohar Kaddush is saying that just as Shas is populated with unanswerable questions, so too, reflective of that, is life, which is also populated with unanswerable questions, the tekus of our lives, which, as we saw in Torah Samachthal, had come from two forms of kfira, from the kfira of the traumas of the Shvira Sakhalim and the kfira of, of the impossibility of an answer in the secret of the Tzimtzum. But nevertheless, the questions bring us face to face with the reality of mechusar tikun, there's something that it needs fixing here. It's what Rashbi said when he came out of the cave. What needs fixing here? It's what Yaakov Avinu said when he walked away from the Saro Shal Esav. The tzaddikim are always asking what needs fixing here because they're not afraid of admitting that something's broken. By definition, something's broken. There's a halal apanui. And as a result of the willingness to try and be metakin things, the tzaddikim are aware of what's not metukan. Rabbi Nachman says in the fifth teaching, that ki isha yisraeli no kol kol adam sarich lomar she kol olam lo nivra ela bishvili that each and every person has to say to themselves that the entirety of the world was created for them nimtza it turns out she olam nivra bishvili that if the world is created for me sarich ani la ayen u levakesh u lemtza hachisaron she bechol davar I have to search out the chisaron in all things and then I have to come to learn how to fill how to fill that chisaron. So we see that the reality of being human is being in this teku type of state of beina mitzarim really represents mechusar tikun. And we see that in the word itself. Why? You have the word tikun, which means rectification, clarified answers to good questions, not unanswerable questions. And when that nun is missing, it resolves into teku. And as we're going to see, that nun of tikkun is in truth the secret of the shah, a nun of bina, which is that emuna that allows us to live with unanswerable questions and to find the answer within the question itself. Vida. 
The person should know, says Rabbi Nachman. Can you, can you just explain the nun part a little bit? We'll get there. The nun part we're going to see. The nun part we're going to see. But let, let the word itself, first let's look at the fact that the word itself is reflective of teku is tikkun without a nun, right? So you see right, that. Okay, you, got it. You see that in the word itself. Then we'll see the concept. After. And that the nun is at the end of the word. Is that? That will also that will also have a, a big to do with it because the answer. Okay, but teku with the nun it brings is the t is tikkun. tikkun. Exactly. Got it, got it. Exactly. Wow. Because what you're saying is good. Why it's actually in order. Tough yud, huf vav, and then the nun at the end. Because learning to answer up a teku is not giving an answer to a teku. Because the answer to the teku is that that Elia and Navi will arrive and answer that teku. So we're still right. living in the question, but what we're doing is we're attaching the nun, the elongated nun, which is the sharha nun of Bina, which is the place that doesn't have an answer. It's a question without an answer because it leads me to a place of emuna. So the nun being connected to teku leads me to the awareness that I might not find an answer to this question, but in the end of the day, the nun, the awareness of the Shah nun, is all the answer that I need. Ladugma, there's a famous story of the Heliga Rebbe of Baruch, the uncle of Rabbi Nachman, the Rebbe of Baruch of Mezhabuz, that he had a Talmud who had stayed away from his Rebbe for some time until one night he came banging on his Rebbe's door very late at night. And the Rebbe of Baruch answered the door. And this Talmud had said, you know, I've come to a place of kfira. I've come to a place of the denial of God and I don't have an answer for it and I can't break free from that denial. I don't know what to do. I no longer have belief. And the Rebbe Baruch sat him down and he says, all of the nun sha'are bina, the 50 gates of understanding, are questions and answers. Questions and answers. And when you come to the sha'ha nun of the sha'are bina, the highest point, so then it's a question without an answer. Because the answer is no longer part of the system. The answer is the first gate of the next 50th gates and the, the infinite growth process. And so he says the only answer to that question that can't be answered is the answer of Amuna. And so connecting the Nun of the Shah Nun to Teku is not answering the Teku. It's not saying on Tisha B'av, I know the answer to all the questions. Nobody has any answers to any questions. Only Mashiach is the answer to the questions. But over here, we see that we're willing to tolerate it through the patience and the awareness and the amuna that Hashem will answer those questions. Vida shezos hanun pshuta. We should know that this extended nun, shenechseret mehatikun v'naase b'chinas teku kanizkel el, this elongated nun sofit that is missing from the word when it's in a state of mechusar shleimus, which leads to a teku. At that point, when the nun goes away, when that extension of the nun, the elongation of the nun is a very important thing. That image of a straight line, of a direct line from above to below, from the, the height of heights down to the depth of depths, is the secret of the kav or in sof, is the secret of HaKadosh Baruch Hu being mashpia, his light through the secret of shar nun, and revealing how everything is part and parcel of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. When a nun is crouched and it's closed off and it's a nun kefufa, it means that that gilu of shar nun is not present in a person's life. And so what happens? We want tikkun. We want to learn how to live with unanswerable questions through the secret of faith. But when we forget about the secret of faith and that nun pshuta at the end of the word, which is the shar hanun, we fall into a place of teku, of unanswerable questions, and not only that, but when that nun of tikkun falls away and removes itself from teku, it goes into almost like a hibernative state of slumber where it clenches itself down and stops being an elongated nun and transforms into a nun that closes itself off into a simple nun. So we no longer have the elongated nun at the end of the word tikkun, but we're going to have a small regular nun that's added to the word teku. And what happens when you add a small regular nun, which is the condition of the nun once it loses sight of tikkun? It takes the word teku and it turns it into kinos. Because kinos are the same osios as tikkun. The only difference is that in tikkun, the nun comes at the end, which represents shah nun. But when that shahanun gets taken away and we're left with a teku, that shahanun now becomes a small nun and it gets added to teku. And not only is it no longer tikkun, but it's kinos. 
because life has unanswerable questions. There's a, a teku in the world. Teku is Matthias. I have two choices as to how I want to look at that teku of reality. If I look at it with moichin the godless, I see it as tikkun. I learn how to live with the unanswerable question through the secret of faith. But when I lose that perspective of keser and my ability to grasp the unanswerable questions with faith, it's not like I can choose to ignore the teku. I have to engage with the teku. And if I'm not engaging with the teku through a lens of faith, then I'm engaging with the teku through a lens of suffering and difficulty, which is the secret of kinos. That when a person lives life with unanswerable questions, without faith, it becomes kinos. With faith, it becomes tikkun. As my Saba, Skusir Ganalena, would say after Auschwitz, in the name of the Chafetz Chaim, that with Emuna, there are no questions. Without Emuna, there are no answers. Meaning to say that there's a teku in Metzias. Either you have Emuna and it's a tikkun, or you don't have Emuna, and all of the questions and the unknowing and the not knowing is going to transform into a kinos. Kinos is a language that deals with suffering. Kinos is a language of trying to fight against this world, trying to use language to express the deep pain of what it feels like to be a human being in this world. Of lamentations, lament as a, a particular form of language. That's what happens. If I lose sight of my amuna and the shahanun and my radical ability to be ma'avar and all of the kushios of the halala panui, then I'm going to get stuck in, te- in, in kinos. Shu osios tikun. It's the same osios. Same osios themselves. Rak shahanun nechfefes. Except now that shahanun is closed down. Hashem yigalenu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu should bring us redemption and He should redeem us. And He should transform the kinos that we experience into a tikkun. And this unanswerable question of reality should be sweetened. And so Rabbi Nachman is not saying, it's unlike other Torahs. Rabbi Nachman is not saying how this leads to that and this leads to that until we come to the proper understanding. He says this is the state of things. And then he says what the state of things are in his understanding, which is that we're in a state of kinos. And we're davening to the Rabbani Shlalem to redeem us by way of transforming the kinos into a tikkun. Because the tikkun, that shahanun, is the way to deal with all of the tikkuns and the unanswerable questions. So in this very small Torah, in this very small but powerful Torah, we're encountering a profound mechanism in which how to contemplate and confront the concealment of the time period, especially the experience of Tisha B'Av itself. But now our year, it's not just Tisha B'Av. Kinos is the language of the day. Kinos does not mean those beautiful acrostic poems and liturgical hymns that were written by Tzadik Yisrael Olam. Every conversation nowadays that a Yid has is an element of Kinos. We're in a state of lament. There's a state of lamenting over what was before and what is not yet now. And so Kinos has become nearly the way of language, even if we're talking about positive things. Very similar to the condition of the deaf beggar, the beggar of Yitzchak Avinu, the beggar, the deaf beggar who represents Yitzchak Avinu, who brings Geula to us. Nachamu Nachamu is Gematria Yitzchak, because Hamtaka Sadinam or Besharashim, and specifically Yitzchak, who represents severity, can understand how to undo severity. And so the deaf beggar, the second day, he comes back to give the bracha of a good life to the lost boy and girl who are getting married in the pit, covered over by twigs and branches. And he says, Hineni, I'm here. Well, first, no, the son and the and the, the boy and the girl who got married, they started being mit ga'ageya, achare ha-batler hasheni. They started yearning for the butler hasheni. And in the moment that they started yearning for the butler Hasheni, he said, Hineni, I'm here. I told you I would come back then in the forest. I told you that you should live a good life like me. Now I'm going to give it to you, Matana Gemura, to live a good life like me. You thought I was deaf, says the deaf beggar. You thought I couldn't hear. But in truth, all of the sounds of this world don't meet even one decibel of sound in my ears because they're all rooted in deficiency and lack. They're all rooted in a place of mechusar tikkun. All language is surrounded around what I don't have, what we don't have, what we don't feel we have in our lives at this moment to be mechusar to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to find enoughness in this world. All language is built around that which is missing. Ki'ilu, that if we had exactly what we needed, we wouldn't have to use language. 
Language is just this tarrying around of not knowing what we actually need. And that at a certain point, language, language says the deaf beggar is not something I want to hear. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear noises that come out of that place of lack. And furthermore, ah, you'll tell me there's shevach and hoda'ah. You'll tell me that there's shir and halel. That's also rooted in chisaron. The positive experiences are also seen in a reflection of how I felt in the previous moment, and now I feel a little bit differently, so now I'm happy as a result of overcoming the previous lack. Even that is moichin of galus. What I want to hear, says the deaf beggar, to live the good life, to hear that sound of Yitzchak Avinu within all of the Gvuros, to see the Marav Tufcha Shetzafant the goodness of Mashiach Tzedkenu, that a Kaddish Baruch Hu hides in places of concealment. The Or Kitov, the Or Haganas, he doesn't want to hear anything other than that. But now, as a result of being stuck in Chisaron and not being visited by the deaf beggar and waiting for the seventh beggar, so we still were trapped in that place of all of our language being rooted in kinos, of not having. But Zakhtar bin Achman, when a person attaches themselves to the Sharhanun, the elongated nun, which is the secret radical faith in HaKadosh Baruch Hu at each and every moment in our lives, even and especially within the concealment itself, in that place, what Rabbi Nachman describes, what we saw, that, that song of silence of Moshe Rabbeinu, of Kach Allah bin Machshava and Vayidom Aharon, in that silent nigun of the Chalal Apani, where a person learns to face unanswerable questions with Amuna, at that point we transform the kinos themselves into tikkun, and we answer up all of the tikkus. And we come to find, like Rabbi Nassim writes to his son, Rabbi Yitzchak, that Mashiach Tzidkenu will sit with us, transforming every ounce of our lives into a Megillah, revealing how HaKadosh Baruch Hu was here and HaKadosh Baruch Hu was there. And that's the secret of the kinos. The kinos are that it's just not yet revealed to be what it actually is. The faith that reveals that everything is good from the top to the bottom is not yet revealed, and therefore I'm still in a state of kinos. But when I could be mezachich, that nun, and be mamshechit, into the teku, which means I have to come into Tisha B'av feeling like an unanswered question. There's no question. Ein Torah. Ein Torah, as it says in Eicha. Ein Torah. Forget about Noah Kaddish Baruch Hu. Ein Torah. In that place of the Churban, in that place of Ayaka, that question that HaKadosh Baruch Hu calls out to Adam Arishon at the emergence of human experience, that shameful cry of Ayaka, where are you? Do you think you can hide from me? That gives birth to the Eicha Yashva Badad. And a person has to feel that Bedidus Yaseira, and a person has to feel alone in the universe, because in truth, each and every person is alone in the universe, because each and every person has to say that the entire world was created just for me, and it is my responsibility to seek out the deficiency and to fix it. And at that moment, I seek out the deficiency, I see what's missing, and I realize that it's Amuna, and I draw the Amuna down, and immediately the Kinos are Mesapech into Tikkun. And in the saying of the Kinos themselves, it's a Tikkun. It's no longer sadness. It's no longer a sadness over a past that we'll never be able to get over, but rather it's an anticipation. An anticipation, it's to the secret of that Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to open up the Oitzer Mat in, in order to enter into Eretz Yisrael, in order to be Mamshech Shkina Lamata Lamata Lamata, to draw down the Kav down to the bottom, that Nun. And ve'eschanan ba'esahi he daven five hundred and fifteen tefilos. We know gematria ve'eschanan gematria shira. But he stopped when he wasn't answered in his tefilos. But there's a five hundred and sixteenth tefila, which doesn't need an answer. That's the secret of teku. Teku is gematria five hundred and sixteen. It's one above five hundred and fifteen. After all of the tefilos comes the tefila of a teku, which is rabbi Shalalim, I know that there's no answer to the questions. I just learned Torah Samach Dalet. Of Adar, there's no answer to the questions. You're here and you're not here at the very same time. How could there possibly be an answer to the question? Beis HaMikdash is destroyed, but Beis HaMikdash is built at the same time. How could there be a question? I'm in exile, but there's also Geula. And in that place, a person is Mukhubur and they connect themselves to that place of the Sha'anun, and their mom took everything, and their mom took the Nituk. A lot of people like to point out that the Osios of Kino, Santikun, is nituk also. It means that there's a separation. Rabbi Nachman didn't bring that remez for a reason. Rabbi Nachman could have shown that remez also. It's not denying the role that that plays in this process, but nevertheless, the ikr is what Rabbi Nachman says, and just to read the words themselves, because it's not a Torah that's giving us information. It's a remez. It's a remez towards tefillah, which is the only tachlis of Rabbeinu's Torah, is to be mahapichet into tefillah. And the last line that he says, 
Hashem yigalenu v'yashaftu hakinos l'tikun v'yatatken ha'teku ha'niskal el. That Hashem yigalenu. Hashem yigalenu that HaKadosh Baruch Hu should bring redemption. He should give us the koyach to redeem our own minds with the Shah Hanuna v'emuna. Amuna b'sharasho and to be mantik all of the difficulty and to be megalazayin on the tikkun amiti which is Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach ben David, Eliyahu Navi, Sraya ben Dan, and Moshe Rabbeinu who is kolu trained Mashiachin in the song of the true song of Amuna which is the Shir Pashut Kafel Meshulashim Ruba which is the secret of the shofar of Mashiach Bezrus Hashem.